Hey, what is up guys? Ivan here with GetIvan.com. In this video, we're going to be talking about scrape box socket error number 148, or not 148, but 10048. So, uh, 10,048, I suppose. So, I've been dealing with this issue for, certainly for weeks, maybe for even for more than a couple months, I don't recall. I'd have to look at my, my support tickets and things like that, but Basically, there are a lot of errors that can occur in Scrapebox as you're doing a variety of, of different types of scraping jobs. And sometimes they'll throw in like error number 148, 10048, or some other code, or some other code. I've probably seen like four or five different error codes over the years. Most of the time, I ignore them because it's usually not a huge deal. Like there are errors here that here and there. Um, but this was a case where all of a sudden I started seeing these errors. Let's open up uh, one of these instances here. Let's let's try this one. So I started seeing a ton of like, let's say, for example, I was going to take this list of URLs and I was going to go, let's grab check by metadata. So some really weird issue was occurring where I would I would run a check and after like a certain several thousand it would start throwing severe like 10048 socket error uh, uh, warnings you know so the metadata checker this was happening to me uh, for also the custom grabber actually the custom data grabber was what really started giving me problems because I was doing tests uh, for a premium order that I had for, actually it was this one right here, Goodreads ratings. And everything seemed to work fine. And then all of a sudden I started noticing at about 6,000 mark, it started throwing these errors, these 10048 errors. So I contacted Scrapebox support and they said that they were baffled that, that in all these different reports they'd had, they'd never seen the problem. You know, they said, they said like millions of requests. I don't know if that's true, but... <laughs> Um, and, uh, but what's weird about it is that Scrapebox actually followed up with me about it, which is, which is really unusual. They don't usually do that. So I kind of talked with them back and forth a little bit. I looked online. They said it had something to do with an SMTP error, uh, SMTP, you know, type of, uh, like sockets being consumed by you know, SMTP process, which is not possible because I don't run that on this server. You know, I don't run anything like that on this server. And so it was really, it's been really frustrating. I went through a lot of trouble to, to test a lot of different things. I, I called my ISP, my internet service provider. I even, you know, got a new virus protection program. Like down here, you'll see, I run, I now run malware bytes so that I could turn off. So I could have the option of turning off the virus software, uh, you know, um, with it, windows antivirus, you can't actually turn it off. Uh, you can only like temporarily disable the real-time checker and also this is kind of an unrelated topic but the real-time checker as you're running uh scraping processes the windows anti antivirus will scale its cpu usage to run the real-time checker so you can often be times be running a similar amount of cpu usage on the windows antivirus real-time checker while you're scraping things so it can consume a lot of CPU resources really unnecessarily. So this is like a tur like a, a secondary re recommendation, but I recommend Malwarebytes. Uh, it's been pretty good so far, and it, it's pretty good. At, it's pretty good at catching problems, and it's uh, it's really fast by comparison. So uh, and it, it's pretty cost effective. It's like a few bucks per machine per year or something like that. Like a few or a few bucks for a f it's like a few bucks for a few machines per year or something like that. So anyways, I went through all these these different tests. I won't go into all of them. There was several, but it, it ended up being like that none of them uh, gave me a solution. The solution is this right here, okay? It's kind of a long story how I found this, but it's like a combination of a solution that, that uh, Windows uh, docs actually provide for an unrelated problem. But I was able to correlate the, f the fact that that problem was connected to, to my problem and I applied this, the fix and it's working perfectly now. So basically you can, you can read this. This is going to be below 
this video in the description. So check that out. I'm in the process of, you know, I tried to publish some content over to Medium uh, and I decided I didn't like it. So uh, I'm, I'm prob what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to transfer my entire website over into uh, Tumblr uh, or at least make a Tumblr blog for my website. And so that will be where I connect my content in the future. But for now, I'm just putting it into the YouTube description below. So, OK. Um, so the first thing you need to do, you got to you got to do a registry edit, which I know for some of you guys, some of you guys like me is is like warning, 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 you know, like don't <laughs> I have a policy. Don't don't go that deep. Don't edit the registry. You're, you're going to break something kind of thing, you know, but this was a really small fix. So it's really not a big deal. So you you hit Windows key R. I'll do that on this PC here while we got this open. So we can keep the, the tutorial open so you hit Windows key R. And it'll open up the run area like this. And then you you can run reg edit and that'll open up. A, sorry about that. That'll open up your regist a registry edit uh, menu and you should be able to just paste this string. So you can just copy this string. Um, let me see. Uh, you can copy this string and just go straight there. Uh, but then you can also just look at the the taxonomy here of this folder and you can just navigate there from the from the left sidebar you can just you know go down the these uh system current control set services and then uh tcp ip and then parameters so when you click on the parameters folder it'll open up this region and as you can see i don't have this applied for this pc yet so uh i don't really run my my major processes on this PC yet, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna buy a new PC and probably make this a, a server at some point. So let's go ahead and do the application so you can see how it works. So the, this is what you do: value name, value type, value data, value valid, valid range. So I'm gonna right click here. I'm gonna go to new, and as you can see down here, D word is the type that you want. So actually, let me see if I can just yeah, here we go. So right click new D word. I'm gonna paste this max user port. And then you basically double click on this and you can paste this value data here. So this is the this is the max uh, supposedly the maximum value that you can set for your uh, for ports. Um, the default is 5000. And I'm not exactly sure how Scrapebox uses it to, to uh, if it's anything like, like how they use threads like they use for every thread that you have for proxies, they use like two. Uh, for however many proxies and connections that you have. Uh, so apparently they are, when I'm running just like one of these processes on one of these machines, they are exceeding 5,000 ports or they, or all of these ports are consumed by varieties of processes, which is, I have no idea why. So support, Scrapebox support did not give me this recommenda recommendation. And, uh, they kind of act like, hey, you're the only person in the world who has problems with Scrapebox. So, uh, but I don't think that's true. Uh, so, yeah, this is the maximum value. I got this from Microsoft Docs. So I just, I, I pasted this. Yeah, it has to be decimal, by the way, not hexadecimal. Don't do hexadecimal. So you have to, you have to select the decimal base and then paste that value. Click OK. And Microsoft said to that, once you do that, it's finished. That's it. So that's not a complicated thing that you're doing. It's nothing, you know, horribly destructive to my understanding. So that's pretty much it. You can close this. And if you open up register, register edit again, also, it's really interesting here. Uh, if you open it again, it'll open to the same spot. So that's kind of convenient because it, it even did that when I rebooted the computer and that they do recommend that you reboot the computer. I don't know if that is required or may, would, you know, necessarily make a difference, but I went ahead and did that on both of my servers and uh, and then tested it and it worked fine. So I tested it with a metadata scraper. I didn't test, test it with a custom grabber. Um, and in the, cust in, the, in the metadata scraper, I didn't get a single socket error, which is awesome. Now, some of the websites, some of the websites, I did get a timeout error, but that's like, it, it, that's a different problem. Um, and that's, some, that's another thing I've talked to support about is the fact that, like, say, on the social grabber, for example, I've had issues where and, and or on the link extractor, I've, I've had issues. Let me show you some of these. So 
Okay. So under see like the social account scraper or a social account scraper, is that it? A social checker, social checker. So I had one, I had one, I think this is it. Social checker. No, 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 maybe this isn't it. Let me check the social account scraper. Yeah, this is it. So with this tool, I had a job, for example, that or it wasn't really a job. It was just someone asking me for help. And and like I was like, OK, I they, well, they offered me a job. Uh, in this case, they were there. They were saying, you know, I'll give you like one hundred and twenty dollars to find, uh, you know, all the social profiles for these URLs. But um, I'm only capable of doing a part of that because you know, the types of proxies that I use can only do a, a part of that. So basically I was able to do like half of it and then I handed it off to them. They paid me a portion of it and then I gave them a referral to somebody else who could like manually kit the rest of it, um, which is sometimes what you, you know, got to do with orders. But uh, what was interesting was that for this utility, I was getting to like the last two or three and it was just frozen. They were just like freeze there for like 15 minutes. This is a common problem with Scrapebox, the locking of threads and Scrapebox support has told me that thread locks are an issue with windows but i don't think that's entirely true i've done some research on it they 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 developed scrape box in delphi and uh apparently there's other like there are there are libraries that you can use that are made for delphi like i don't know what they use i'm sure that they use some good things but i'm pretty confident that it's a problem with delphi and it's a problem with how they are using delphi in conjunction with the windows api and so the, basically what I discovered in my tests is that the, the threads get locked on the, on the same websites. So something is happening to where certain websites cannot be scraped. They have either some form of protections or some issue with accessing and like, however, you know, Scrapebox renders that data to even, you know, attempt to get to get information or maybe how Windows in, Windows API interacts with that website. I don't know, but it's those same websites. So what I figured out is, you know, if you if you can identify the, the, the problem causers, then you can kind of take those out and then it'll like finish the process. But um, this would be another thing to figure out, which I don't know how I'm going to figure this out, but figure out if there is a way to 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 like uh, in, you know, change some setting in the, in the registry so that threads do not get like monopolized. And then Scrapebox does not just like get stuck there. I don't know. I don't know why Scrapebox feels that it's the user's responsibility to figure that out. I really feel like this is their responsibility, but, um, this is a problem here. It's also a problem in the very important link extractor module. And uh, this is a really big problem, like with Scrapebox, because this is the fastest way to scrape multi-tier. And when you use it in Automator, there's like there's no way to get past it. Every single Automator job that I run that with with Link Extractor gets stuck. Every single job that hits that uses Link Extractor gets stuck on that process. So, and the problem is that you can't kill it, and uh, because it won't save the output. So it's it's just a very different process, but anyways, um, th this is a, this is a similar issue, and that's one of the reasons you got to have uh, Windows Task Manager open. You have to kill the process, reopen it, open the Show Save folder, and then drag the auto save. I don't even know what this is, but you got to drag the auto save out. That's like the only way to use Link Extractor. So um, that's a that's a to be announced, to be continued problem. If I can, if I can, so I, I figured out the socket error problem, which is a huge victory for for those of you guys who are using Scrapebox regularly. I highly recommend apply this registry edit uh, because it'll help you to circumvent any of those types of port errors. The next the next hurdle is if I can figure out how to overcome the the, the thread lock uh, for this for the Windows API sockets with Scrapebox, then Scrapebox will have no glitches, no freezes and errors and problems. If any of you guys know or have any idea, please send me a message. I'll give you credit. I'll give you a backlink and a YouTube video or something and you have my thanks. But uh, that's pretty much it. I appreciate your time. Uh, please give me a like, comment and subscribe if you, if you enjoy this video and I'll catch you later, guys. Bye bye.